I want a checklist on everybody who set foot in here yesterday. Everybody. Staff, tradesmen, deliveries, all table reservations. They're all here, except the passing trade. Bodie, I'm not having you on this case. Just pass. Just thought I'd try. Mind what I say. You're emotionally involved. Two people dead, 11 seriously injured. How many does it have to be before you're allowed to be emotionally involved? I'm not arguing. I'm sorry. You know that deeply sorry. If you want my personal opinion, sir. I don't. don't. Well, I was only going to The bomb might have been intended for Bodie quite. That's another reason for not wanting him in the case. Now, shall we go on? Nineteen. It looks like a girl. Mother, he's beautiful. Oh, my God. Brian. 
Look at that. Darling, you know I'm behind. Now look, please. I'll read it if you like. The Trattoria Rosetta was bombed last night. Let me see that. We could have been there. Hmm. But we weren't. What the hell do we have to do to get this guy? A bullet would have been easier. Better if it looks political. Better if the target is obscured. Messy, though. Squeamish, Mr. Phipps. If I were, I wouldn't be in this racket. A quaint old-fashioned term. This is a business, Mr. Phipps. Nurse, how is she? No change, Mr. Bodie. Oh, is she going to be all right? We hope so. Can I, can I go in now? No, not just now. She's... We're doing everything we can. Yeah, thank you. Yes, your body is good to see you. Your young lady, she's all right, too? I'm so sorry. Look, some questions I'd like to ask you about. Well, talk to the police. I don't understand why anyone should do this. I tell them I don't care about politics. I run a restaurant. Yeah, I know. Uh, but someone... But uh... Why me, senior body? Why my restaurant? I mean, I, I don't find it possible okay. to... Okay, now look. Before the explosion, someone delivered some flowers, right? Yes, my special delivery. He said it is for your table. Was I mentioned by name? Table number 10 is what he told me. Table number 10. I think it is because you have your young lady with you. And... Yeah, all right. Now, look, that particular table was given to me because there was a last-minute cancellation, right? Yes, that's right. I, I, I was very busy last night. You see how busy I am. And now? Now? Gino, can you remember the name of the cancellation? I remember the man. It was his wedding anniversary, but it doesn't come, so I give the table to you. Did he book by phone? Yes. You can't remember his name? Uh, he came very often. Gino, it's important. Yes, I, I think his name is Senor, Senor Forrest. Look, uh, just keep this between us two, okay? Take care, Gina. Ciao. What the hell are you doing? He's a mate, right? I can't I visit a mate in hospital without you and uh, Carly? Don't it? give me that. I know why you're here. Look, just don't, Todd. Leave it, Todd. Oh, yeah, great clown. Do you think I don't know how you feel? Just don't blow Look, it. If you're asking me to drop it, forget it. No, no, I'm not. I wouldn't ask you to drop it. I know you're too well for that. But if Cowley finds out, you know what's going to happen, don't you? you want you got to do me a favor. Yeah. Just stay clear of me. I'm going to get whoever did this, Ray, and neither you nor Cowley or anyone else is going to stop me. Okay? Will you just stop a minute? Will you just stop and talk for one minute, Bodie? Listen. I'm going to have to have a stand-up fight before I get through to you. You want to get yourself arrested for brawling in public? Terrific. And I think Cowley would like better than to see you safely out of the way till all this is over. Look, I know what you're talking about. Now, don't worry. I'll not embarrass anyone. OK? Who is that? One of the waiters. Did you speak to him? Yeah. Well? You know Bodhi. Quite. One of the dailies had a call seemingly from the IRA claiming responsibility. And? Oh, whoever it was hadn't done their homework properly. Mm, no code. Someone's trying to make this look like a political bombing, but it wasn't. Sending a bunch of flowers far too theatrical. Which brings us back to Bodie. Name of Arthur Brian Pendle. Picked up for drug dealing and illegal possession of firearms. Sent down for three years.
Does Mr. Brian Forrest live here, please? Yes. Oh, do you think I could uh, have a word with him, please? He's not in at the moment. He's at work. Oh, I see. Uh, are you Mrs. Forrest? <laughs> no, I'm not Mrs. Forrest. It's my mother you want. I'll just go and get her. Thank you. Can I help you? Mrs. Forrest? That's right. But would you mind awfully coming around this way? I was just doing a spot of gardening. No, not at all. Carol said you're with the police. CI-5. Well, Brian said you'd be coming. It's about the bombing. All right. That's right. I made a list at Somerset House of all the couples who'd have had wedding anniversaries on that day. Oh, that's rather clever. It's quite a short list, really. Just you. Well, I... Do you know, I really don't know quite how I'm going to help you, Mr... Booty. Well, I suppose the first thing is why you and your husband didn't show up after you booked the table. Oh. Well, Brian got home rather late. Mm -hmm. And rather than go through all the effort of driving up to town, we thought we'd just have a small celebration here. May I ask where your husband works? Croydon, Croydon mostly. Oh. Though the firm has actually got a London office as well. He's, uh, he's an accountant, a chartered accountant. I don't suppose you can think of a reason why someone should want to kill him. Brian? No, not Brian. What's that? What? I mean, it's just too absolutely ridiculous for words. Mrs. Forrest, someone delivered that bomb to your table, specifically table number 10. Now, why do you think that was? Well, it's certainly got absolutely nothing to do with either Brian or me. Mr. Bodie, we weren't even there. He's a vicious little swine. That much I can tell you. But explosives? Arthur Pendle wouldn't know a fuse from a piece of string. Neither would some of those kids in Northern Ireland. The men behind them certainly do. He wouldn't have the guts to plant a bomb. Pushing dope or snatching old ladies' handbags is about his mark. Yeah, progress. Even villains progress. Well, I certainly didn't make any progress with him. I had to go through all the steps. But once he'd wheedle his parole, but that lad could lie straight in bed. You've checked his last known address? Checked his last three. No chance. Paperwork. That's what gets me. Arthur Brian Pendle. What else do I know about him? Oh, yes. The broken home bit. And there was a sister. She used to visit him in prison. Until she went inside herself for shoplifting. Now, if you could find her. Yeah, how? Paperwork. Intersection of Kingsley Street and Argyle. Yes, OK, got it. Now, what took you so long? You want miracles. Even computers have to be fed. Paperwork, that's what it's all about. Married twice before she was 20, lived in squats, been on the run. You want miracles, you really do. That's right, out. What is all this, dragging me out in the middle of the day? Just wanted to talk to you. What did you say to Miss Johnson? I told her I was an old boyfriend just back from the Arctic, six months patrol in a nuclear submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw daylight, let alone a pretty face. Oh, come on. That's true. What's it all about? It's about, uh, hang on now. Here we are. Oh? Yeah, about your girlfriend, Sally Pendle. Friend? Yeah. She is no friend of mine. Well, the manager said you were the one that knew her best. I worked alongside her. I had no choice, but that's all. What do you want her for, anyway? Well, you're not going to believe this. We think she might be able to help us with certain inquiries. Oh, I've heard that one before. Well, if she's in trouble, I'm not surprised. Really? Why? She just has trouble, that's all. She'd rather nick a pound than earn five. Doesn't go for honest endeavour. Uh-uh. You enjoy yourself last night, did you? Not especially. Ah, oh, your mother was telling me they had some sort of celebration. Wedding anniversary. Oh, that. No, I went to a movie. Their idea of a celebration is to sit at opposite ends of the table to one another, downing large drinks until they're legless. Not for me, thanks very much. Bye-bye. She didn't last five minutes here. Not satisfied with the chips. She wants separate keys to the lockers. And went through some of our handbags, too. Yours? Oh, not me. I keep my hard-earned cash on me at all times. That must be difficult. Oh, no, it isn't. Where did she go from here? 
She can't have gone far. Got a couple of kids round her neck. That would slow anybody down. Where did she go? You didn't get it from me, right? Right. Sally Pendle. I'm uh, Ray Doyle, friend of Arthur's. We were inside together. I don't know where he is. Ah. Well, I thought you might know, you know, being his sister. I told you, I don't know where he is. Ah. What do you want him for, anyway? Well, uh, I own some money. Well, that's all right. You give it to me, I'll see he gets it. Well, I, I'd rather give it to him personally, you know, if you don't mind. I told you, I'll see he gets it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Hey! What are you doing? Get out of it! Get out of my place! Oh, no! You run, Phil! Come out of it! Oh, right! I think so. What do you mean you think so? Why'd you run for it if you didn't know? He's got to be. Get him in the car. Well, let's leave him here. Get him in the car. Uh, it's Mr. Bowley again, about Miss Sheldon. Miss Claire Sheldon. No change. Yeah. Yes, I understand, yes. Yes, thank you.
Grant Forrest is my partner, Mr. Bowley, and I find it highly unethical talking about him behind his back. When you're talking about planting bombs in crowded restaurants, Mr. Padgett, ethics become a little absurd. Quite. I realize that. All the same, when he told me you were at his house asking his wife about... You met Forrest uh, about 20 years ago. Somebody introduced us. Uh, I can't remember who, but somebody who knew that I was thinking about starting up on my own. And Forrest seemed like he'd be the perfect partner, right? Well, he seemed to be the... have all the right contacts. All he seemed to ever have to do was pick up a phone. What about his background before you met him? Been living in the States, mainly. He went there just after his parents died. You handle some pretty big accounts, I imagine. Nothing that would warrant a bombing, Mr. Bodie. Yes? What? Oh, oh, fine. Put it through to the other office. Excuse me. George, thanks for ringing me back. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I've got some chap in my office asking a lot of questions. He claims he's something from CI5, is it? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Forrest Card. He asked me to pick it up for him. Mr. Forrest? Well, he's just gone in himself to pick it up. Ah, uh, well, he's probably forgotten he's given me the keys. Well, I thought if anybody knew anything about it, you would. Name of Bodie. Bodie? Oh, that's all right, Dick. Thanks for checking with me. Do you think I could have a word with him? Right. Mr. Bodie. Uh, whereabouts is it? To the left as you go in, far in. was killed, that's all I can say. I mean, it could have been me. Quite. But you, uh, you did recognise him? Yeah, yeah, I told you. He came in 15, 20 minutes before Mr. Forrest and this other man. Right, miss, that's for sure. Oh, it's a miracle nobody was killed. I mean, it could easily have been me, you know. Yes. Yes. Do you reckon he's hurt bad? I don't know. Get something to tie him up with. I knew he was a cop. Well, he isn't. Tie him up. Well, who is he then? Just do as I say and get yourself cleaned up, all right? Police. You so much as touch that phone, I'll rip it apart. Right. Don't argue all right, with Major, all right, Major, leave him to me. I want to talk to you and I want the truth, you understand? Very well. What do you want to discuss? My girlfriend's on the critical list. There's two people dead and 11 people seriously injured. How about that for starters? You're referring to the bombing. Right. Ah. What do you want me to do about it? That bomb was meant for you and the second one today proves it and you knew it was coming. Now, why don't you cool down, young man? Have a drink. <laughs> Considering you just escaped death, you're pretty cool. Scotch, right? I'm not here for cocktails. I want answers. Soda or water? No, thank you. So, you want to know what my connection is with these bombs? Hmm? Well, the answer is perfectly simple. I haven't the faintest idea. I'm a chartered accountant. I've been an accountant all my life. The only injury that I could ever have done anybody is to overestimate their tax liability. That's hardly a motive for murder. Or perhaps it is these days. Your eyes cold, Forrest. Anyone else in your position would be out of their wits, confused. I told you I'm an accountant. Accountants are supposed to be logical people. What are you? There's been two attempts on your life. And ever since I've been on your tail, there's a very interested party following me. So let's forget all this. I'm just an accountant bit, right? What can I say? You tell me. All right. Well, let's start with... How come you managed to get your business going so quickly? I'm sorry. Your business contacts when you came back from the States, who were they? 
People I'd met, people I knew. No secret about them. You're a liar, Forrest. And she'll call me a liar. You're unreal. Do you know that? You're unreal. A guy puts a bomb in your car. And God knows how you avoid getting killed. Do you phone the police? No. Do your brothers to wait for them? No. You just go home, pour yourself a scotch, kiss the wife, and act like nothing's happened. I was going to contact the police. When? Next year. I, it all happened too quickly. I suppose I panicked. You're a bloody liar! Right. You damn fool. I warned you. I could have you for this. I'm right, though, about Forrest. I'm not interested in your opinions. You're a good team, you and Doyle. I don't want to lose either of you if I can help it. Sorry, sir. How like hell you are. What's this supposed to be? It's the registration number of whoever it is that's been keeping tabs on me. By the way, your, uh, your young lady friend, there's some improvement. Thanks. Just remember, you disobey any instructions of mine ever again. And... Now, I suppose you better finish off what you got yourself into in the first place. What about Doyle? What's he come up with? I don't know. I haven't heard from him. I wouldn't bother. Who's your friend? The one driving the tank? I wouldn't bother about that either. Graduated to the big time, have you? Don't talk. Save your strength. Not that it's going to get you anywhere. Oh, and don't bother to shout. No one will hear you. Police have now confirmed that no casualties were involved as a result of the explosion in a West End car park earlier today. It is believed the incident is connected with that of a similar explosion in a London restaurant last night. The police have issued a photograph and description of a man. He is slim. As Arthur Brian Pendle, alias Garrett. So, they do know who you are. How? What? I asked you how. They don't. Arthur Brian Pendle. I don't, they're lying! Alias Gary who? I don't know what you're on about. Slim Bill. Look, I've never been copped, I swear it! Don't lie! I set it up and you blow it. No form! You're all right, I've done a bit. Sure, everybody's done a bit. You've done enough! You know who we've got in there? Only a CI-5 man. Top of the tree, that's all. Good. What are we going to do with him? Well, we're not going to turn him loose in Piccadilly, are we? <laughs> Yes. What went wrong this time? I don't know. You don't sound very concerned. We'll get him. I hope so. My client's getting restless and I'm getting angry handing out contracts which aren't fulfilled. That boy you used. Get rid of him. I'm going out for a while. What about... I'll you? handle it. You just stay put. Uh, Mrs. Forrest. Yes? My name's Coley. I believe one of my men has been making a slight nuisance of himself. Oh. Yes. No, I really can't apologise enough. I'm very sorry. And by the way, there are a few small points I'd just like to clear up. May I come in? Yes, of course. Come in. Thank you. Oh, a charming house you have. Thank you. As I was saying, there were just one or two points I wasn't quite clear on. Your husband's not in by any chance? No. He just popped out to the shops before they closed. Oh, not to worry. Mm. I see you have a nice large garden. Are you fond of gardening? I quite enjoy it, yes. <laughs> I must admit the nearest I ever get to gardening is when I buy vegetables at the supermarket. 
I understand your husband didn't do national service. Uh, no, he, um, he failed his medical. He had asthma when he was a boy, and so they wouldn't pass him. Really? That's odd. I'm sorry? Uh, well, because there's no record of him ever attending a medical. I don't understand that. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not quite with you on that. We checked. There's definitely no record. Well, I suppose it could have got lost, couldn't it? I expect so. Are these out of your garden? Oh, they're beautiful, quite beautiful. I like roses. Uh, Mr... Cowley. Thank you. Was there any particular reason why you just asked me that question? About your husband? Yes. No, no, just a matter of interest. Oh, I see. As you say, I probably got lost, along with all these other records. I beg your pardon? Well, you know how one thing can lead to another. He was born in Jersey, am I right? Yes, that's correct. But there are no records of that fact, not even a birth certificate. Indeed, there's no evidence he's even been to the Channel Islands, let alone been brought up there. Nor is there any evidence that his father ever served in the army, that he was ever issued with a ration book, or that he even existed. There are no records of his parents' death in a car crash, and the English-speaking Union say that no one with your husband's name was ever awarded one of their scholarships to go and study in the United States. In short, Mrs. Forrest, your husband didn't start to exist until 1958. Now, as I was saying, there are just one or two points I'd like you to help clear up for me. We should have been informed. I don't care what the Home Office or your people say. Our orders were to get Forrest out from under and fly straight back to the States. Get Forrest out from under what? He's an ex-mafia accountant. Twenty years ago, we put the finger on him. But he turned state's evidence, provided we set him up with a new identity. Change of face, change of scene. What, the mob traced him here after all these years? Mm. Those guys have long memories. They never close the book. You know what they say, once a crook, always a crook. Well, Forrest's been dabbling over here, and that wasn't very smart. It's like it or not, the mob's here, too. Forrest got into a land deal with an American company, but he didn't know he was dealing with a group fronting for the boys. Their lawyer turned out to be a guy Forrest had worked with way back. So, don't tell me the FBI provides an officer care service for informers. Forrest panicked. He called us and offered another trade for another new identity. He gives us evidence tying the company with the mob, and we give him a new cover. Not exactly ethical, but practical. Until the bombs start flying. All right. 
You want your evidence. Fair enough. But I want those bombers. Make yourself at home, Brian. Drink? Scott. I don't get it. We were hired to kill you. That's right. Why do you think we haven't been successful? Still don't get it. When Fitz and his client find out. Don't worry. We'll be abroad by then. What? Brian will be joining us as soon as he's sorted out his insurance. Insurance? A couple of men have promised to organize it for me in exchange for some documents. <laughs> don't worry your head about it. Have a drink, Arthur. What happens to your family? Start another one. Oh, yeah. They'll be all right. I've provided for them. That easy? No. What am I to do? Hmm? It reminds me I was filming. A daughter of mine. She lives on the telephone. But he's not at the office, so he's on his way home. What are you worrying about? Those bombs were meant for him. What? But you said it was all a mistake. You said Mr. Cowley told you it was all a mistake. I know. I told you a lie. Your father's been lying to me all our married life. I... Do you know, we don't really know anything about him at all. But he's just dead. Plain old ordinary nine to five daddy. There's no mystery about him. I wish he was. You know, there are times when I long for a bit of excitement to sort of liven things up a bit. And now it's actually happened. I'm very frightened. Mommy, he's going to walk in that door any minute now, have his nightly scotch and soda, and sit down and bury his head in the Financial Times. I don't think you will. I shall miss the girl. But Madge... You're going to trade her in for a new model? Very important to have a respectable domestic front. Try them again. Come on, come on. It's, it's Doyle. It's Ray Doyle. Sure. No. Five. Got a trace on this gone. As soon as you can. Ray. It's four five, Ray Doyle. Get a trace on this gone. <laughs> Peter! 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 Let me out! 
me! Mommy! Mommy! No! 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 It's all right. You call that nothing? The man's a maniac. He'll be all right. I can handle it. Turned out quite handy, really. When I blow this place sky high, the police will think it's my body they found in the wreckage. Who is he? CR5. Cop killing on top of everything else. That everything else you mentioned has lined our pockets for a long time to come. You were spying about the young Pendle. How big is your share? <laughs> Incredible. You really are. Ramrod straight city gent. Even I'd buy a used car from you. Not that you dabble in anything so lowly. And you're more ruthless than anyone. Practical. That's all. More practical. I asked you about young Pendle. The police might find two bodies. It's outrageous. Outrageous. All those are confidential papers. If I were you, Dick, I'd stop worrying about any of this and start looking for a new partner. How's it going? Hello? Yes. It's for you. Hello, yes. Oh, it's about time. Carriage huh? Holdings. Directors Brian Forrest and Peter Crabb. Yes, what about it? Holdings? I've never heard him mention that. Right, give it to me. Peter Crabb. You know him? Yeah, he's involved in one of the big protection rackets, but he's always several moves away from the action. Not this time. That's where Dawes' phone call came from. No wonder the contract missed the target. Your mobsters gave the contract to kill Forrest to Crabb. Forrest's partner. So Forrest fooled you. And the Mafia, too. They must want crab as bad as we do. I like it. There's no accounting for taste. Oh, we're taking the stuff down to the car, untie him, and bring him in here. Lay him about three feet from the charge. No nearer. Cars are packed and ready. Recognize it. Because it's yours. Except now that it's mine. Crab. I don't know, Mr. Fitz. You better know, Sonny.
dumb crud. What took you so long? You look terrible. Grabbing Forrest. They're down in the car park. Well, go on! I can't. I'm going to call myself an ambulance. Save me the trouble. Drop it. British Airways announced the departure of flight 501. That's us. British Airways announced the departure of flight 501. It's all there. Strange to see Sydney again, even if it is only a flying visit. Have you fellas ever been to Australia? Can't say that I have. What about you, Arthur? Yeah. You're not going there either. We've got something else in mind for you. A long stay in this country. On the moors, probably. Hello. Hi. Oh, I shouldn't have bothered. Eh? Hey? Oh, I didn't. With the clerk next door. Oh. How is she? Fine, except that she's thinking of packing me in. Too dangerous to hang about with me. Uh huh. How are you feeling, anyway? Well, apart from the ribs or including the ribs. They didn't even bring me any grapes. Ah, oh, all those pips, mate. You know, very messy in bed. Hey, hey, hey. Hands off. She's mine. She goes with the tablet. Oh. 